Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, call to order the uh, regular scheduled council meeting for December 5th, 2016 at 7 p.m. Did you look at me? Oh, yeah, I looked at you. Mayor right. <laughs> Lowry? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Lindsay? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. McLaughlin? Here. Mr. Craver? Here. Uh, all present. Thank you, sir. Tonight we'll have the invocation by Councilman Bill Lindsay. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask you this evening, once again, Father, to give us the wisdom to operate this city, to make the best decisions we can for our citizens and the government side, sir. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 And we'll do a pledge tonight. We'll use the flag in the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. <laughs> all right, moving on, we'll need actions on the minutes for a regular scheduled council meeting of November 21st, 2016. So moved. Second. <laughs> Mr. Call or uh, Mr. Call? <laughs> Sorry. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Craybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Minutes past six to zero. Thank you, sir. Moving on uh, to communications tonight. None this evening. None this evening. And on to the city manager's report, Mr. Bridge. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of the public. I would like to share with you the city manager's report. Um, it is kind of short this week. Um, action report, Bell Manor. Uh, meetings are being scheduled. There will be more information to come. Uh, me and Ms. Harris did go over there today uh, for a tentative walkthrough of the building again to re-familiarize ourselves. We also had selected some items that they will keep behind and to some items they will take with them. So as we have more information, I will definitely share that with council. We will be probably having another uh, meeting or council walkthrough so you as well can re-familiarize yourself with the building. Um, so again, more information is to come on that. Um, I did have a brief discussion with them today um, regarding the donation before the end of this year. Uh, we don't think that's going to happen. So we are probably going to push this into 17. And moving on down, we have waste management information under informational items. Please choose your service level if you have not done that already and you need to communicate that directly with waste management. Um, if you are on a bag program prior and you have not selected your new service level, you will automatically be entered and billed for the 96 gallon standard service. So please again call waste management. Um, we are assuming probably the first couple weeks might be a little hiccupy, um, but if you did not get your trash picked up, just simply call waste management and have them choose your new service level and they will um, deliver your new container size. Um, so I think that's all with waste management. We did have some great donations come in through the city, uh, to the city, and I have attached the letters that I did send out. Uh, one went to a Mr. Bobo for his donation of his boom truck uh, and assisting placing the tree, but he also uh, graciously had donated some additional lights for that Christmas tree as well. And there's a second thank you letter in, in here too to Ms. April Gibson for actually donation of the tree itself. The tree looks fantastic. We had a little ceremony there on uh, Saturday evening. Good 60 to 70 people probably showed up for a tree lighting ceremony. It was a good event. The tree looks gorgeous. So thank you for those two individuals who stepped up and donated their time and materials to the city. Upcoming capital improvement program. Uh, I will be working on that, finishing up this evening and uh, working on it a little bit tomorrow. Um, those will be submitted uh, via email uh, December 6, 2016, which is tomorrow to council, and you'll have a resolution on that on the 19th of December. Uh, during that uh, resolution period, you can, you're can you more welcome to have a public work session on that, so uh, we'll have Mr. Collier put that in the paper that the council will be going over the capital program for the year, and everyone is invited to come and discuss that. But it will be on resolution via resolution on December 19th. And budget work, section, work sessions. We will need to schedule a few budget work sections in the future. 
Budget is due April 1st, 2016. We are anticipating submitting that to council via resolution on March 6th. 2017? Oh, yeah, good call. Thank you. Wow. Yep, so it's due by April 1st, 2017, not 16. Like, Ooh, we missed that vote. <laughs> yeah, we missed that vote for a little bit. <laughs> yep, I think that's all I have for the city manager report, so I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Mr. McLaughlin, going back to the uh, waste management, yeah. I still haven't received the letter. I thought we were to receive a letter and you choose which. The you know, here, here's the deal, and I have, I have an explanation for you. You have a, you're probably classified as a mixed use residential and business because of your former business in there. And how I ran the data was from the county auditor's website, and it just simply ran an Excel report and it based off classifications of your house. So if you were a mixed use, like a business and a residential, unfortunately, I probably left you off. So you're the cause. I might be the cause <laughs> for you not, you particularly not getting your, your letter. I do apologize. Okay. You can still call. I'll, I could. You can have mine. Mr. Lauer. I have a question. I called yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, I changed services very prompt and brought the new ones out, but they didn't take the old ones. And I called twice, and they told me they don't know when they're going to I will have to get with Tom tomorrow and okay. find out what the schedule is. Apparently, they have scheduled nothing to pick up the other ones. Yeah, okay. What size did you have before? The, big, the biggest ones, and I dropped down a size. You dropped down a size? Yeah. Okay. They should let you keep your existing recycling container and then switch out your only trash container. They brought me two new containers. Of 64? Yeah. Okay. Recycling and you, you and still wait and get your 96 taken back? Right. Okay. No, I would I'm give them. They brought me new recycling and new trash. Sure. Lower size. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Council, any other questions for the city manager? Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Yep. All right, moving on. This thing is formatted kind of oddly tonight. So uh, we'll move on to comments from the members of the public tonight. Ma'am, if you would go to the podium, <coughs> give us your name and address, please. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Nancy Nichols Hawkins, a former resident of New Carlisle, now residing in Brant at 6500 U.S. Route 40. I am wondering about the purchase of Bell Manor while my alma mater sits decaying on Madison Street. I attended that school for six years, graduated in 1949, and now when I drive past it, I'm very saddened by what I see. I understand several suggestions were made, but they were shot down. My theory is most of the council are not native Nucalillians and don't care, or maybe there was a few who didn't want change. Now I realize it's too late to change. The school has to come down, but at least tear it down and give it a decent burial. All I ask is a brick from this my good old school days. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Mayor, if I may, Mr. Ma'am, before you go, uh, we'd love to. Would you like a lot of bricks? We can work on a lot of bricks for you if you well, like. Well, there's only seven of us left out of my graduating no, I, no, class, I, so seven I would went, be the most. I went to that school also when I was a child, and, and I enjoyed it. And I used to run in the hillsides behind when the woods was back here in the past. We used right? to go sled riding. And sled right. on it. We had a lot of fond memories. We all do. Unfortunately. Three and a half, four million dollars to renovate that school is just out of question. Tearing it down is probably over two hundred thousand dollars at this point, which we don't have. We're not kidding, and that—that's the unfortunate part. We just don't have the money at this time, but we are working on that. And believe me, everybody up here would like to have it down. Well, and you know, if here. you would have done something oh, yeah. when the school first came empty, yeah. There was many possibilities, you're, you're but nothing correct. was done. But somebody had purchased it, and then they had blown holes in the walls and so forth as a machine shop. And uh, even when we actually took ownership, it was in really rough shape, to be quite honest with you. But Just get me a brick. I understand. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you quite a few when that happens. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Right. Did you want to talk about that? Yeah. And, and ma'am, you said that, just to clarify it up a little bit, we didn't purchase Bell Manor. We didn't buy Bell Manor. 
Oh, you didn't? No, no, that's going to be donated to the city, free. Now, whatever you spend your money, we're tearing the school down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Any other comments tonight from the public? All right, thank you. Moving on to committee reports, none tonight, so we'll go to resol resolutions, which is one uh, int introduced tonight with action. Mr. Collier. Resolution 16-12R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution amending the new car lot income tax rules and regulations for tax years 2016 and beyond to reflect a change of due date for quarterly tax withholdings in compliance with modified Ohio Revised Code 718. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Reynolds. Move we adopt resolution 16 12R. Second. Second. Then Mr. Craybarker. Yes, it was. An explanation of this, or, uh, this resolution. This resolution changes the due date for quarterly tax withholding in accordance with ORC 718. Council, any questions, comments? Mr. Collier, when you're ready. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Excuse Mr. Me. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craybarker? Yes. Passes six to zero. Thank you, sir. Moving on to ordinances. Ordinance 16 48, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending the estimated resources of the city of New Carlisle to the county auditor that will be available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2016. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move we accept ordinance 16 48. Second. An explanation of this ordinance. This ordinance amends our estimated resources for fiscal year 2016 due to, one, the transferring of the waste man management franchise fee from the general fund to uh, street fund 201, and then also decreasing the pool fund 505 due to, due to the successful year the pool had by receiving additional revenue. Council, any questions, comments? Mr. Collier. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass six to zero. Ordinance 16-49, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance reducing certain appropriations of the City of New Carlisle Ordinance 16-10. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. A motion to adopt Ordinance 16-49. Second. Second. I give that to Mr. Uh, Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. He's louder. Okay. <laughs> it's an explanation of this ordinance. This ordinance reduces estimated expenses the pool was scheduled to spend for year 2016. Council, any questions, comments? Mr. Collier, when you're ready. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mayor uh, Mike Lowry. Yes. <laughs> and Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Mr. McLaughlin. I, I would just like to thank the people that were in charge of the pool this last year for all the good work that they did to be able to reduce that. Uh, at 22,000, they did a great job, and hopefully it'll be a better job next year. Mm -hmm. So, kudos to all of you that were involved. And I know a number of you were there and actually painted and cleaned it up and so forth. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Collier, when you're ready, we'll continue. Ordinance 16-50, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending ordinance 15-54E regarding the return and payment of tax. Council. Mr. Mayor, move we adopt ordinance 16-50. A second. It's an explanation of this ordinance. This ordinance uh, places due dates pertaining to the tax in our tax rules and regulations. Um, this, is, this, will, this is due to the anticipated and ongoing changes to ORC 718. Council, any questions, comments? 
Before I move on, Mr. Collier, when you're ready, please. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craybrock? Yes. Pass six to zero. Ordinance 16-51, public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance establishing temporary appropriations for the fiscal year 2017. Mr. Mayor. Mr. McLaughlin. I move that we accept ordinance 1651 as written. Second. Is that Rick, Mr. Lowry? Mm -hmm. okay. yes. The next mention of this ordinance, this is a yearly maintenance ordinance that we do. This will establish temporary appropriations until we get our final budget for 17 finalized. Thank you, Council. Any questions, comments? Mr. Collier? Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Passes 6 to 0. Ordinance 16 52, public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of water softening rock salt. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move we accept ordinance 16-52. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance, this is also another <coughs> yearly ordinance we do for our, our water softening salt. Any questions, Mr. Mayor? I, I do have a question. How much less is, is that than what we did last year? Oh, know it's, that the it's the same. It, it's always went up. This is the first time it stayed the same. First time it changed. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Uh, the, the increase in salt has happened every year uh, since I've been in this position. Mm -hmm. This is the first time it stayed the same the following year. So no increase this year. But it was two years ago. It was really sky high, right? No, that was uh, three years. That ago? was road salt. Road salt. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. This is a different salt. This is for the water treatment. I'll figure that out some year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your I'll figure that out again, yeah, Mr. Collier. When you're ready, Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Absolutely. Mr. Craybrock. Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Passes 6 to 0. Ordinance 16 53, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the sheriff of Clark County, Ohio, for police protection within the city limits of New Carlisle, Ohio. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Craybacher. I'd like to make a motion to accept. 16-53. I'll second it. And an explanation of this ordinance, this is our, another yearly ordinance that we do to contract out for police protection with um, Clark County. Council, any questions? I do. Mr. Currybacher? I can find what I was looking for. Um, I noticed that there's two different types of liability insurance. You know, one that, you know, one says that we pay for and the one says that the county pays for. Can you explain the two different types of liability insurance? It just basically covers each other for us driving each other's vehicles. There's a liability insurance. Well, okay, so that doesn't that doesn't cover something that the deputies would do or something that's wrong with it. It covers their deputies and our cars because they're not employees of the city. So okay. we 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 insure them as additional insured and insured. Okay, but how's come there's two different because they have another po po policy they take out on their own. I can't speak for their policy. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, but you know, like I said, it was mentioned in the contract of two different ones. That's why and they're, they're probably are, because it's gonna, we have, it has to be regulated. They do their policy on their end too. And if it wasn't in the contract, then they wouldn't have to carry the insurance. So it's usually in a contract that both parties would carry the insurance. Okay. Sure. Mr. Lauer? A couple things. <clears throat> Ten days. If a deputy gets sick, has to take off. Right. And I've talked about this before. And it's, you know, uh, the gentleman in charge at that time mm -hmm. kind of stood fast on it. Uh, if deputy is off for ten days, okay, do we still pay? Is there any reduction in the contract? Well, we get a replacement. No, only after ten days, according to the contract. Oh well, we're only built for what we use. 
Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. I think that needs to be changed. Okay. How many de how many deputies how many deputies are there? Not in New Carlisle, in Clark County deputies. Yes. I would say somewhere between ninety to one hundred five. Ninety to one hundred five. Okay. And I would think that over here in New Carlisle, if we're missing one for that we know five or six days out of ninety to one hundred and five, they could replace the deputy. Here's here's what here's and I agree with you. Um, first thing that we need to do is make sure it's not on their end and their union contract that stipulates that 10 days. Okay. Hurdle one. Hurdle two is, um, and I'll be approaching this with council, if there's anything that we want changed with this particular contract, I will wait till after the new sheriff is sworn in. Right now we're still under our current. Okay. Second thing, mm -hmm. okay, and, and I agree with you to wait till the new sheriff is But we have to, we have to get this one passed because it ends okay. by the time that she's sworn in. Okay, and there's something I would like to have you I want counsel to be, you know, understand sure. this as well. To uh, talk to her about in the past, on numerous occasions, when we needed a deputy in New Carolina, it was a deputy. It has happened on more than one occasion, I'll say. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many for sure. It was a deputy that had never been on the street. And they came over here and would ride with the deputy we had for two weeks being trained. And I don't think that we're paying for trained deputies. Under the contract, I would appreciate it if you would talk to the sheriff elect. Sure. That that comes to a stop and that we get a full train. <clears throat> Absolutely. And that's nothing against the deputies we have. It, it's happened numerous times. Absolutely. And I think that's wrong. Absolutely. I think once we once the new deputy is sworn in, we'll probably have another discussion and open meeting about what council wants, and then we'll I'll put a list together and address it one on one. Okay. okay. And the third thing is if city council you or whoever the administrator is mm -hmm. thinks that at some point in time some of the hours need to be changed, I think that's our call, not the sheriff. Absolutely. Okay. I think that we're going to have a lot more better results and communication in the next month than we've had in the past 30 years. It's certainly could be any more. Well, maybe it could be. Okay. So, Thank you. We'll, we'll get there. If this, this one needs to be passed, we can amend it. We can always bring it back up. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Lindsay. There's, there seems to be a lot of questions on this contract and some of the questions I had has already been asked. What I would like to see, uh, you made the comment we have to pass this because the current contract expires at midnight the 31st of December, mm -hmm. is that correct? Mm -hmm. Can we not get a 30 day waiver extension as it is on this contract, wait till the new sheriff comes in go over this contract, fix the things we want fixed in it, and then bring it back and bring it for a vote? Can the we not do that? From last year to this year is the same exact thing. Only thing that's different is the prices due to the increase. I would rather feel more comfortable signing this 17 agreement into effect. So that way we know when 31 comes around, we have police protection. Either way, we're going to have to open something back up and amend it, whether it be the 16 contract, the addition, or the 17 new contract. And I understand where you're coming from, Mr. Lindsay, I truly do. But I think it's probably in the best interest for us to go ahead and pass this one. We can open it back up after she missed the sheriff elect is sworn in. To reiterate, no matter what no matter what avenue council decides to do, we're gonna to have to open something back up and amend it immediately, whether it's the 16 extension or the 17 contract. If something happens in that meantime to where we can't open things back up, now we're stuck with that end date of the extension. I'm not a future person. I can't read into the future, but it seems like to me we cover our bases and do our best due diligence by passing the 17 contract. We know that's in place for at least the year 17. If something happens that we can't reopen anything, we're at least covered. Contract from 16 to 17 is verbatim word for word, except for the prices. Has the sheriff elect? Has she had an opportunity to look at this contract since, I can't it, answer that. since it involves the sheriff's office? I can't answer that. She's not sworn in at this point in time. I don't know if she's seen maybe a, okay. I don't know if she's seen a 16 copy that's out there because that's public information. Mm -hmm. um, I have not directly shared the 17 with her now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Very valid points, though. Very valid points. Mr. Craig Walker. Um, Colleen, uh, had, you know, we're going to pay as you go. Has that worked out really well this year? Has, has we seen a reduction? She, she just, I see she um, We're pretty level. I have an Excel sheet put together. So at the end of the year, 
I'll send that out to council. We've averaged, and don't quote me on these numbers, okay. I haven't looked at it probably a month. I think about 20 to 23,000 a month. We have the spikes. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're up to 30, um, whether it be a maybe, um, I think there's a couple building cycles to where we're actually paid not only for a month, but 10 days into the next month. So we'll see a spike like that. But for the most part, yes, it has definitely worked out in our favor. Morally, we have literally been billed for what we've been using. Mr. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Lindsay. I have a follow up question, Mr. Bridge. The, you say we're being, uh, are, you're keeping an eye on exactly what we are using compared to what we're building? Yeah, how it works is every- Because in, in the past, I think we've, they've been, we've been taken advantage of. Yeah. So, you what know, I that's require, putting it mildly. What I require when he sends me the invoice is if you look at the back of that contract, the 17 contract, the main card, try to find it real quick. And it says where the wages are, the contract worksheet. Every time yeah. I get an invoice, it looks like this, but it has that usage on it. So for like November, it'll say what deputies we have and then what their portion of their salary is for that month. And it'll be a total at the bottom that we take. Okay. So it's very easy to follow along and find out what they charge. Us. And it, it also charts their hours that they work? Yes, it prorates their salary for that. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Anytime Bridge. you guys want to see that file, just email me and I'll... It out to you. Okay. Just while we're in open meeting here, this contract isn't drastically more expensive than last year's. I mean, it's like 47 and change. Uh, yeah, it's not that much. I sent out the comparable to you guys when I first got it. Uh, yeah, 4,700, not 47,000. I'm sorry. So. Yeah. Yeah, 4,700. <laughs> that's all due to their contract with the union and their pay rises, correct? Yeah. I thought yeah. you okay. If, no, yeah. 4,700. Yeah. One more comment, Mr. Mr. Lindsay. Okay. If, if I remember correctly, reading the the, the uh, email that you sent out, this contract in generally goes up two percent on everything. Yes. There was one item that was only one percent, and I do not recall what that item was. I think it that, was the either sick payout or there wasn't hers, and it wasn't medical. I think it might have been the sick payout, but don't focus on it. It was, it, there it was, was one flat. One. It was something that we, we have to pay, but it only went up 1%. It was only one item. The rest of it, for the most part, the contract went up 2% from last year. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do remember that. Thank you, sir. Do you guys like those Excel comparable sheets when I make them? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. I do. yes. Okay. yes. Mr. Lawler. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. One last thing. When you do speak to the new chef, it would be nice if she would show up maybe a couple times a year sure a absolutely i think she'd be more than we need a contract sign yeah. that the previous one did sure thank you no problem yeah. she's okay <laughs> mr mclaughlin well, i think we as a community and also the council and everyone should thank you again for looking into as, as you did last year to lower that contract down for the actual pay sure. of the deputies that we receive before we were being charged for the higher echelon this contract could have easily been four fifty, sixty, seventy thousand at this point. So thank you for doing that. That saved the city money at that point, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Mr. Reynolds. I want to echo the sentiments of everyone up here. I think that you know it's something we should pass. Uh, as Lloyd mentioned, we were getting hosed. We were getting charged at a higher rate. I'm happy that we fixed this. And I don't know, like uh, we had mentioned in the past. Uh, during the last budget meetings in 2014, we were going for, through a hardship. Uh, the council meeting fee, Sheriff Kelly talked about waiving for us, and that now it's back on because mm -hmm. we just put it on the last one. Is that something that might be able to be waived again? Yeah, I'm going to speak with Sheriff Alex about some other charges on that. Yeah, because it, it, when we went through the budget crisis, the sheriff's like, oh, we're not going to charge you for that. And then it's, oh, never mind, we're actually going to charge for that. Yeah. Six months later, when our levy passed. Sure. I think, I think it, like I said, once we have a discussion with the sheriff-elect and we voice our concerns, I think that it'll be even more in our favor. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Council, any other questions? All right. Mr. Call here. Countdown. <laughs> Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Passes six to zero. The next three ordinances are strictly introductions, and I'll just read through them. Ordinance 16-54, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-19-16. The 
an ordinance to approve the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances as part of the various component codes of the codified ordinances to, to provide for the adoption of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances to provide for the public publication of such new matter and to repeal ordinances in conflict therewith. Ordinance 16-55, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-19-16. Access to radio transmission facilities, cooperation agreement. Ordinance 16-56, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-19-16. An ordinance, an ordinance authorizing the leasing of a portion of the Waterworks property of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio to the New Carlisle Baseball slash Softball Association. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Collier. Uh, Mr. Kit Kelly, I just want to go back to you real quick. I know I already touched on this once after a couple meetings back. Do you anticipate us having to order road salt this year? Order what? I'm sorry. Do, we, do you salt. think we will have to order road salt this year? Uh, I got a full barn. You never know. Okay. But I always anticipate it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Council, any other questions, comments for tonight? Mr. McGough? I have one. I just wanted to remind everybody about a retirement party that's coming up for John Dietrich. I'll read this real quick. He served 20 years. Commissioner Dietrich has served Clark County. His dedication and loyalty and appreciation for Clark County are acknowledged by many. Commissioner Dietrich has contributed so much of his time, energy, and humor, especially the humor, to this community will not be forgotten. So they're having a retirement party for him. It's this week. Uh, I think it's Thursday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. There'll be lunch, dessert, refreshments will be provided. It's at the Springview Government Center. That's out by the uh, Board of Elections. That's the, and it's going to be at uh, room 151. Again, from 11 to 1, and everyone is invited. Uh, I'm sure you would appreciate. They expect to have two or three hundred people there, so be a time to come by and say hello or goodbye. <laughs> All the above. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Also, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, Marshall Gorby for the parade and yes. to Ethan as well for the tree lighting ceremony. It was a nice weekend on uh, Main Street and down the downtown area. So thank you. thanks to them for everything they did this weekend. And if I may say one more thing, Mr. Reynolds, I saw on Facebook you had a, a to die for suit on. Oh, uh, we're at the last meeting <laughs> of the uh, council like I did last year of the month. What? You should have worn that in tonight. Yeah, the blue one. Should have worn that in tonight. Uh, I, I thought a sweater would be festive enough. Next, okay. I'll do the suit at the last meeting like okay. I did last year. <laughs> All right. Can yeah. he sit down there by you when he does? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Collier, if you want to read through the other business there before we wrap it up. <clears throat> Under other business, city offices will be closed Friday, December 16th at noon for the employee Christmas party. City offices will be closed on Friday, December 23rd and Monday, December 26th for the Christmas holiday. And on Monday, January the 2nd, 2017, for New Year's. And uh, Council will have, will conduct interviews for the uh, Council's <coughs> vacancy uh, this Wednesday, December the 7th, here at Smith Park Shelter House, starting at 6.30 p.m. Thank you, sir. Councils, all those individuals have been notified and scheduled, so hopefully they'll all be here. And that's not open to the public. Right. Or is it? I mean, can be, yes. I think it. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All, we, all we ask is if, if it's open to the public that those individuals show up and don't come and go as we're interviewing people to not interrupt the process. Okay. There's only one individual on the list who still may be an if. And I still haven't got a solid answer back to the yeah, And uh, Mr. Mayor, just so you know, I will be coming back from Columbus. I'll be in Columbus that Wednesday and Thursday for a CERB conference. Okay. Um, depending on what time the conference gets out, I'll, I'll shoot over. Um, I have to get up early the next morning, too, so I'm not sure if I'm going to stay for all the interviews. Okay. Um, but depending on what time that conference lets out and traffic from Columbus. If you leave by 4.30, you'll get here right in the nick of time. Is it that bad? 
Just, I do it every day, yeah, it gets okay. bad. It's and, and you also have to drive 85 mile an hour to do it. I don't drive that. Well, no. <laughs> don't, don't admit that you bring it all. <laughs> all right. I don't, I don't speed, Mr. Lindsay. I don't know. I followed you the other day. Couldn't keep up. <laughs> Council, any other questions or comments before we move on? Anybody in the audience have anything before we wrap it up? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move we adjourn.